The Beacon course was renamed for Stanley Dancer in 2002. Now, for the first time in 2006, it'll be the Stanley Dancer Memorial. Stanley Dancer didn't just set a fine example for the racing world, he set a gold standard for everyday existence. He was a man of decency and fairness, humility, principle, generosity, and hard work. He never hesitated to take the time to help anyone, and he didn't have to be wearing any VIP button. Stanley's life was one of perseverance and of singular focus, one of excelling, one of making it to his chosen sport's highest level. Stanley's reign at the top of the harness racing world was longer than any other. But there's a saying in sport that goes, it's tougher to stay on top than it is to get there. We'll never know if this was the case for Stanley. He was the same man before he made it and while he reigned supreme. Stanley was a man whose handshake was his contract. A commitment from Stanley was an honored commitment. 8.30 meant 8.30. He didn't follow anyone else's lead. He set his own standard, whether it be with his aggressive, innovative style of front-end driving, or his meticulous attention to detail he exhibited while training his horses and running his spotless stable. Stanley wound up setting the standard by which others tried to follow. There's a saying that older men have dreams, younger men have visions. Stanley's visions became reality, and he encouraged all the youngsters who wanted to make it in the industry to follow them through. But it is true that Stanley did things the rest of us can only imagine doing. You know anybody else who was on the cover of Sports Illustrated, who was invited to the White House and had dinner there, who appeared on the Ed Sullivan Show, The Price is Right, What's My Line, Night of a Hundred Stars, and shared the stage with Muhammad Ali, and rubbed elbows with the likes of Mickey Mantle, Whitey Ford, Joe Frazier, Jerry Bailey, and Arnold Palmer? Only Stanley. Sometimes, as we advance on in years, there's a tendency to forget where you came from, not Stanley. Born and raised in New Jersey, Stanley won his very first race at Freehold, his last at Garden State Park, his biggest at the Meadowlands with Duena, and he hosted the fairs at his farm in New Egypt for 16 years. Truly one of New Jersey's finest sons. Stanley danced to his harness racing's great sequoia tree. Calm, stoic, always there, an undeniable presence, bigger than life. But more importantly, one that lives on. One that will always be there and always has been. No calendar can tell us differently. For a man of slight physical stature, Stanley cast the biggest shadow in the sports history. When he talked, everyone listened. When he moved, they followed. Stanley's influence, his direction, his guidance, his knowledge, his decency, all live on. We all honor and respect a most unique man who no doubt had a profound influence on our lives. You know, it was 20 years ago the sport lost Billy Houghton, 10 years ago since Del Miller. Now, Stanley. Together, they form an unmatched trio in heaven, but a void of immeasurable proportions for the rest of us. It's almost as if the gods of racing knew we needed a decade in between just to recover from each. Someone, a non-racing person, asked me how old was Stanley when he passed away. I told her, 78. She said, then isn't this a celebration of his life? To which I responded, that's exactly what we've been doing for the last 50 years. A friend of mine asked me how long it took to get ready and write this eulogy. I told him I didn't write it, Stanley did. Never once did Stanley not thank me in all the years I talked to him, live and on the phone. But maybe, just maybe, it was us who should have been thanking him all along. I think I speak for everyone when I say we will never, ever forget you, Stanley Dancer.